If you've been feeling overwhelmed with anxiety lately, try listening to a guided meditation on the Meditation for Anxiety podcast. Meditation is a proven natural way to help you calm down and dissolve stress so you can feel lighter and happier. So subscribe for free today to the Meditation for Anxiety podcast by searching for Meditation for Anxiety on your favorite podcast player. This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 1972, Nine Reasons to Date a Fellow Introvert, by Julia Lang with IntrovertDear.com. Hello, everybody. My name is Greg Audino, and I'm the guy who is reading to you each and every day from some of the best content we can find that covers relationship building. We're here to help you build better relationships in every sense of the word. In today's article, we'll be addressing the introverts out there and why they might find it beneficial, in the author's experience, to date a fellow introvert. So, let's see what introvert dear guest writer Julia Lang has to say as we optimize your life. Nine Reasons to Date a Fellow Introvert by Julia Lang with IntrovertDear.com Dating another introvert can mean finally finding someone who matches your energy levels and respects your needs. I recently started dating a fellow introvert after being in a relationship with an extrovert. They say opposites attract, but I don't always find that true when it comes to personality traits like extroversion and introversion. One of the foundations of a strong romantic relationship is a basic understanding of a person's primary needs, and I've found that a lot of my needs are better understood by someone who operates similarly. Of course, all relationships are different and there are a lot of happy introvert-extrovert couples out there. But personally, I believe it's amazing to date another introvert. Here's why. Why dating a fellow introvert is incredible. Number one, a lot of your date nights involve takeout and binge-watching. After a long week, the last thing most introverts want to do is get dressed up and go to a crowded club or bar. When we were together, My extroverted ex wanted to go out literally every Friday, and it was utterly exhausting. He didn't appreciate my very real introvert need to unwind in the comfort of my home. My new introverted boyfriend is more than happy to stay in. Dating a fellow quiet one means they completely understand needing to wind down after a long day. They're more than content to order a pizza and watch eight episodes of The Office, even if it's date night. Number two. They intuitively understand your need for alone time. Another introvert tends to be more understanding of the boundaries that you set when it comes to alone time. They know that solitude is crucial to your energy reserves and mental health, and that paradoxically, time spent apart ultimately makes your relationship healthier and more satisfying. My extroverted ex and I would fight when I asked for space. My need for downtime was offensive to him, and when I asked for it, he couldn't shake the idea that he had done something wrong. My introverted boyfriend understands why I need my alone time, and he's happy that he gets alone time too. He doesn't get annoyed if I don't reply to his text message until three hours later, because I'm tucked away in my bedroom enjoying some me time. Number three, commiserating with each other is therapeutic. My introverted boyfriend is the one I text when a coworker does something that bothers me. He can always make me smile or laugh over the situation. He's empathetic and gives words of encouragement about these situations, because he's been through many of them himself, something my extroverted ex was never able to do. Commiserating with a fellow introvert is pretty darn therapeutic. They understand what it's like when you're overshadowed by an extrovert, or when someone insists on small talking with you when you're just trying to catch a few moments of peace. Plus, Getting to talk about these hassles is a bonding experience that can bring the two of you closer together. Number four, they're ready to leave the party when you are. Each introvert is different, but if there's one thing we quiet ones have in common, it's that we can only take so much social stimulation before feeling exhausted and overwhelmed. Staying at a party, or any place that's more than two people, for too long, may even make us feel anxious or physically unwell a.k.a. the awful introvert hangover. When I tell my introvert that it's time for me to leave, he is more than happy to agree. Chances are he wanted to leave 10 minutes ago but was being polite. My extroverted ex always wanted to stay and socialize, 
because he was the life of the party. It caused a lot of tension between us, and it's so nice to not have that tension anymore. Number five, your conversations are on point from the beginning. My boyfriend and I met on a dating app. We ended up talking the entire day we met, and then went on an in-person date later that night. We clicked right away, because being two introverts, we were able to have conversations about deeper, intellectual topics from the get-go. It's no secret that introverts despise small talk. It's draining and feels fake to us. Looking back, the conversations I had with my ex were a lot different in the early stages. They were all small talky and often tiring. It took me a while to know if I even had a connection with him, because I could feel exhausted just talking to him about basic things, like my work or my family. Even as my relationship with my ex progressed, I still didn't feel like he was able to connect with me on a deeper level. So now, with my introverted boyfriend, it's incredible to have that ongoing level of emotional connection. Number six, they're great listeners. Early in our relationship, I found myself thanking my introverted boyfriend for actually listening to me. He would just smile and say, that's what I'm good at. It took me a while to understand why I was thanking him. I felt like my extroverted ex didn't take my problems seriously. He seemed bored by my issues and would often change the subject or even try to talk over me. He would try to give me advice when I just wanted someone to listen and understand. I'm not saying that extroverts can't be good listeners, but at least with the ones I've met, it's not their primary mode. With a fellow introvert, listening seems to come naturally, and it's nice having someone who can actively listen, because it makes me feel appreciated, which ultimately strengthens our relationship. Number 7. Sitting in quiet is okay with them. My extroverted ex always wanted some type of noise in the background, whether it was the TV or simply him tapping on the table. He didn't feel comfortable just sitting there with me. He would always have to be talking or making some sort of joke. He also repeatedly made uncomfortable comments about me being so quiet, as if this criticism was supposed to draw me out. It was draining for me because it overstimulated me. With my introverted boyfriend, it's not this way at all. We feel relaxed in silence, and it's quite comfortable. He understands how draining it is to be constantly stimulated, and he does not need to fill the room with noise 24-7. It makes for a far more peaceful environment and cuts back on relationship stress. Number 8. They respect your well-being. Extroverts have different needs that contribute to their well-being, such as needing more social time than introverts. A lot of times, because our modes of operating are so different, extroverts don't respect the factors that contribute to introverts' overall mental and emotional health. For example, my extroverted ex didn't respect my need to process my feelings alone or take extra time before speaking or making decisions. With my introverted boyfriend, I get a sense of peace just knowing that he respects my total well-being. And number nine, they don't take your time together for granted. Dating an introvert means they know you have limited social energy and need to be selective about who you spend your time with. As a result, my introverted boyfriend cherishes our time together and doesn't take it for granted. On the other hand, sometimes my extroverted ex was flippant about the time I gave him. He didn't appreciate when I pushed myself to hang out with him because I knew it would make him happy, even when I felt overspent. Our relationship is still new, but I have yet to feel overspent when I'm with my introverted boyfriend. He's respectful of my time, and therefore is respectful of me. I feel loved and appreciated by my introverted boyfriend in a way that I didn't feel with my extroverted ex. If you're an introvert who has struggled to find the right partner, consider dating a fellow introvert. You might finally find someone who matches your energy levels and respects your needs. You just listened to the post titled, Nine Reasons to Date a Fellow Introvert, by Julia Lang with IntrovertDear.com. We talk about love and communication here on the show every day, but there's always more to learn. And lately, I'm proud to say that my own knowledge of relationships has reached a new level, thanks to our sponsor, Masterclass. Masterclass is an app and streaming platform that makes a meaningful gift this season, because you can help a loved one learn a new skill from the world's best performers. It's like Masterclass instructors are your own personal mentors, providing content and videos that are going to help you reach a new level. For just $10 a month, 
There are 11 categories and over 180 master classes to pick from, with new classes added every month, like renowned psychotherapist Esther Perel's class, which helped me gain a better understanding of relational intelligence, something that has absolutely helped me to be more present and more communicative with the loved ones in my life. So, this holiday season, give one annual membership and get one free at masterclass.com slash optimal relationships. Right now, you can get two memberships for the price of one at masterclass.com slash optimal relationships. Masterclass.com slash optimal relationships. Offer terms apply. This show is sponsored by Regain Couples Therapy by BetterHelp. Whether you're in the honeymoon phase or partners for life, perfectly content with your partner or going through a rough patch, setting aside time to listen to each other and work through conflicts can transform your relationship. And I can tell you from experience that sometimes the best place to learn how to be the listener or communicator that your partner needs is in therapy. If your relationship is having ups and downs or you simply want to work on yourselves together, consider giving Regain a try and see how your relationship can improve no matter what stage you're at. This is an entirely online form of therapy that's not only helpful, but also designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. The best relationships are always worth fighting for. Try something new in therapy. Visit Regain.com slash ORD today to get 10% off your first month. That's Regain.com slash ORD. And thanks to Julia for this post. As we can tell from her experience, dating another introvert can indeed bring a unique level of comfort and understanding to a relationship. And one takeaway from this article is the importance of finding a partner who appreciates the value of alone time. In a world that often celebrates extroversion, as we've heard before on the show, introverts can feel pressured to conform to more social activities than they're comfortable with. And dating an introvert means having a companion who not only understands, but also cherishes those moments of solitude. It's a partnership where taking time for oneself is not only accepted, but celebrated as a means of self-care. And that means of celebration is what can take a relationship from good to great. So in essence, dating another introvert allows you to create a relationship that aligns with your natural tendencies and also promotes a deeper understanding of your partner's needs. It's a reminder that compatibility is not solely about opposites attracting, but also about finding someone who resonates with your core traits and values and encourages them, ultimately leading to a more fulfilling connection. But that's going to do it for today, everyone. So I thank you very much for being here and staying until the end. We couldn't do this without you. So have a great rest of your day and be sure to come back tomorrow where we will begin our parenting leg of the week here on ORD, sharing content specifically for the parents out there. That's where your optimal life awaits.